Hey, welcome to JG3 Reviews. If you're new to the channel, my name is James and I review fountain pens and I'm going to be expanding out into inks and papers and, and handwriting and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but, but really, uh, I love fountain pens and I like, I, honestly, I'm just a pen junkie of all kinds. I may work in some other kind of pens too, just for the fun of it. But today I'm gonna, going to be reviewing the Parker Vector and this is the translucent blue model, which I really like. But before I get to this, a couple of things I want to share with you besides just that uh, note that we'll be expanding uh, the uh, subject matter here a little bit. Uh, the first is that Joost Applebaum of Applebaum Pens in the Netherlands has asked me to be a part of their top three pens uh, series on their channel here on YouTube, and I'll put a link up there for that. And uh, I want to thank him first for inviting me to do that, and two, I want to invite you to watch it. It'll be on their channel on Monday, May the 4th, and uh, I'm excited about sharing those things with you there. Uh, uh, the second is that on the way to the review, something happened to my Parker Vector. I, I, think, I think it fell victim to the Rona. What happened was, you know how the post office is kind of all bogged down and, and behind and everything, and that's, you know, can't be helped. Uh, it, it, its tracking number just kind of went off the radar. And so I contacted the seller on eBay, very great seller on eBay, and uh, asked, you know, is, is it all right? Did it mail? I'm not complaining, uh, just checking on it. And so they very kindly said, you know, as far as they could tell, it had been lost in the mail, so they were sending a second pin, and they did, and my, uh, well, what happened was then the first one showed up too. The first one showed up a day ahead of the second one, and I contacted them and said, hey, the pin showed up, let me pay you for the second pin. They said, no, thank you for your patience, uh, enjoy the pin, uh, and, and refused payment for the second one. So I decided that when the second one did show up, I want to pay that forward, and so I'm going to have a giveaway of this Parker Vector. And so those in, that, the information on the giveaway and the rules for all of that will come on Tuesday of this coming week. So that's Tuesday, May the 5th. I'll put out a short video with the rules and how you can sign up uh, in the contest for the Parker Vector. Now with that, uh, let's, let's get on to the review. I think that's all that I was going to share extra. But now let's look at the Parker Vector for today. The Parker Vector is a pen that has actually been around for a while, so I'm kind of, I may be a little late to the party on this one, but uh, I wanted to check it out. I'd heard things about it. I like my Parker Jotter. Uh, some of you have had great experiences with your Parker Jotter fountain pens. Some of you were like, meh. So this one may garner kind of some of the range of impressions. I think that's good, and I like it when all those conversations happen because, uh, you know, experience varies. Our mileage varies and different perspectives that's a good thing and I like that that gets shared all in the comments so be sure as we go through the review feel free to participate but we're gonna take a close look at the Parker Vector today and see is this a good pen okay so here we have the Parker Vector and again it is a translucent blue it's not transparent you can't it's not a demonstrator really uh, but it is a really pretty dark dark blue and I just I'm a sucker for a dark blue pen in case in case you haven't noticed that already uh, it comes with a simple design modern design starting with let's begin with the clip the clip is the uh, modern interpretation of the Parker arrow it's got a good stiff uh, springiness to it it will hold in place no problem at the base of the arrow there the base of the cap is Parker uh, stamped into that and on the back is something I like to see every now and then, made in the USA. So if you're looking for an American-made fountain pen on a budget, this may be one you, you, well, it is one you definitely want to consider. At the base of the barrel, you have a stainless steel end cap. And at the top of the cap, you have a plastic something. <laughs> so very simple, very, very simple. I like it uh, that, you know, design is something that's going to be subjective. You can like it, you can not like it, but I do like this, this design. Maybe uh, for some, it's a little bit of a, a narrow diameter pin, uh, but uh, depending on the, it really varies for the pen, whether or not I like uh, a thin pen. This one I have enjoyed writing with, so not a big deal. Very similar uh, in diameter, by the way, to the recently reviewed Muji fountain pen. So if you have this, uh, the diameter is going to be similar. The grip is very different. I, I, I prefer this, this grip 
but uh, I do like the, the Parker Victor as well. Let's uh, continue with the design. When you take the cap off, you find a steel section with a plastic feed section just before the nib. And so uh, the only thing here, this would be my only uh, little bit of criticism of the pen where it might be uh, maybe the, the biggest dividing point in things that I hear from people who use it. Again, it has not bothered me, but I can completely see where it would bother some, and that is this step down right here. Uh, it is a sharp step down. It's not necessarily that it's that that far, although you can kind of see there about how much it drops. It drops a good bit, and maybe maybe there you can kind of see. It's sharp, and they should have smoothed it. They should have taken that angle all the way out to the edge of the pin, but shoulda, coulda, woulda, they did not. And so it actually has a sharpness to it, enough that with my fingerprint, individual ridges in your fingerprint, it can catch and pull that pin away from my hand. And so when you're writing a long time, if you're a high gripper, and sometimes I am, but because this is not tapered, I don't mind moving further down the section. If you're a high gripper, that may drive you crazy. I've heard from some that it does, and I can understand why after writing with the pen. If we look at the nib, let's jump to that. Uh, I like this simple design of the, the steel section and then going into the nib. But the nib is just a little bit short. It's also a little bit familiar, understandably so. Uh, the American-made Vector and the French-made uh, Jotter have a very similar, though not identical, nib. You know, they both lack a, uh, a breather hole. They're both very stiff. I would not try for line variation here. They're just not that kind of a, of a nib. These are more uh, designed for, you know, a lot of note taking and signing and things like that, uh, not for anything where you're looking for a lot of variation. Uh, nobody's making professional uh, written invitations with these pens. These are daily use fountain pens, uh, working fountain pens, student fountain pens. And uh, uh, that's how I would use the Vector and how I would see it. But very, very similar nibs. Uh, obviously, the section on the Vector goes higher than on the Parker, but you can see that from the point of the engraving of the Parker name all the way down to the end of the nib, they're, they're practically identical. And the same goes for the feed. They are in their sections differently but you're looking at very, very similar feeds and nibs, uh, just nearly identical. So that will also give you some information if you're familiar with the jotter, how the vector writes, and if you're familiar with the vector, how the jotter writes, because they are quite similar. Both of these are uh, medium, and that's, that's my only experience with the, with the Parkers, is with the medium nib. I've not written with the fine, though I've heard that it is a good a good fine nib, but the, I know the medium is, and I'll show you that uh, here in the writing sample in a second. Before we get to that, open this up. It has metal threads feeding into that metal section, and so I would not eyedropper this. I wouldn't because of the metal at the end either. Uh, so it's, it's going to be a cartridge converter pen. This is the Long Parker uh, converter, although that's not the ink that I have in it. I've refilled it with a syringe because sometimes uh, their converters can be a little bit uh, on the pricey side when you consider the price of the pen. I, I don't like it when the converter costs as much as the pen, and so sometimes I put that off. You can, and I have done so here in the jotter, you can use a Lamy converter. Uh, many, including myself, have been successful in using a Lamy converter in a uh, Parker jotter and in the Parker vector. So that's something to consider because their uh, converters are very reasonably priced and abundant. So that's something in good quality. So that's something to consider. And obviously I've done that with my jotter. Uh, I just don't, I had to rob it uh, from one of my lamis to do that uh, for the moment. But uh, you can get converters and uh, cartridges pretty simply. So let's move on to the writing test for the Parker Vector. Okay, so before I get into the writing test, let me give you a little bit of an idea of the size of this pen. I kind of forget to do that uh, at the end of the design thing every now and then. But this is the Parker Jotter, and you will notice that those are very similar uh, in length. Here is a Diplomat Magnum, a very uh, common pen. A lot of you may have that, and, and that will give you some idea. And then I mentioned the... Uh, 
the Muji. Let me just move that out of the way. The Muji pen and the ever common Lamy Safari. Much bigger pen. Now these pens probably uh, fight for some of the same customers and I would guess the same thing about the Diplomat Magnum. And so that gives you an idea if you're looking at these. Uh, and I would say they're very different approaches to the same need. None of these pens is exactly alike, but you can check out their reviews here on the channel. I've reviewed all, all three of these now. Uh, and all three good pens, but may have different appeal to different people. They're all three very different from each other. And then uh, just to throw in something more unusual but similar in size is the Wingsung 3003. This is a pen that has a, a wider uh, diameter. And, of course, this pen and is basically an, an extra large of the Pilot Prera, which is in a different price class from the, uh, the Parker Vector. This one being two bucks. So, the, uh, the other pen that's very similar to the Parker Vector would be the Bauer 801. And it's extremely similar. Some wouldn't like it because it's maybe too similar. I will tell you this, and I've reviewed it, and I'll put the link up above. The Bauer writes very well. I was very impressed with that. My wife liked it so much that she took it, and so I can't put it here next to the Vector in this review. The one advantage that it has over the Parker is it doesn't have that step down, and so some people prefer it for that reason. And now that I have this, I understand, although the step down is not as big a deal for me. That's just going to be a personal issue, how you write and what your preferences are and how it, how it fits your hand. So there you go. Now moving on to the writing test. I mentioned before that the Parker Vector nib is very similar to the Jotter. And in fact, I wish I'd kept the sheet where I compared, or where I had the writing sample for the jotter, if I put them side by side without the name of the pen, I, I don't know if you'd know which one you're writing with. This is a medium point. It is quite smooth. I will tell you that I, I really like uh, the smoothness of this pen. It keeps up. I've had no problems with dry starts, no problems with skipping, no problems with anything. So, you know, maybe we'll have that today, but I doubt it. Uh, but been a very reliable pen, and that's been my experience with my jotter as well. The ink in this today is, I believe, and I may be having memory problems, but I believe that it is the bottle that's sitting there. I think it is the Pelican Royal Blue. I could be wrong about that, but I believe that's what I put in it. Um, I know that I, it's not it's not a Parker Blue because I've already run out of that in this cartridge. Let me write and you can listen and see what you think about its smoothness. This paper is an, an art paper uh, for markers. I find it to be extremely fountain pen friendly. I get it at Hobby Lobby. I like it because I kind of like a uh, an off-white paper. It's very smooth. There's no bleeding ever or, or uh, feathering or anything like that. And so it's been just really, really good. And uh, it gives me a consistent paper across my reviews. So I like it. Some pens I like it better than Rhodia because uh, Rhodia, for some pens, it has a weird feedback feel that that I don't quite like, and I probably just broke some unwritten rule in admitting that. Not too wet, but plenty of ink. I just find this a pleasant pen to write with. And even though I'm usually not uh, as enamored with pens with a diameter and a grip that are this thin, uh, the Pilot Metropolitan I like, but I only write with it in short stints because it's a little bit thin. It tapers down where this doesn't. I, I find it comfortable enough. I probably would not write with it as long myself as I would with, say, the Safari, which I like that triangle grip. If you're looking for an alternative to that because you don't, uh, 
I would I would check this out. It's not an expensive pen. It's not meant to be. This is at their uh, more frugal end of Parker's line of pens, and there is nothing wrong with that. It has a great nib. It's quality. I find that it's very well made. The fit and finish on the pen is excellent. You notice that when it caps, which I didn't mention earlier, uh, it caps all the way down on that metal uh, section at the end of the barrel, and you're not going to have that fall off or go flying. And it's light. Uh, I don't I don't write with a Safari ever uh, posted, and I write with uh, a lot of pens posted if they're light enough. This one is one of those. I like it. It's not crazy long. It's just, it's good. If you're familiar with the Oto Tasha when it's, I should have brought that out here, when it is posted and is at its full length, very similar pens. And so that would give you uh, some idea of what this is like. I think they write similarly. They feel uh, a lot alike, except that this has a metal uh, grip section. So that gives you some idea of dimension if you're familiar with that pen instead. So uh, do I like this pen? I think you've probably picked up that I really do. And uh, so I'm really glad that I have an extra. And so come back on Tuesday because I am going to give you then the uh, the rules and a way to enter into the drawing for the Parker Vector. And, and maybe you'll be happy with this pen as I have been with it. It's, it's a good pen and I'm going to enjoy writing with it. And uh, if you're into uh, dark blues, be sure and sign up for that drawing because it's a cool color. God bless you. Have a good week. Stay well and hit that subscribe button or, and the bell so that you can be notified when I post about the drawing for the Parker Vector. Have a great day.